Do you know how to best implement checkboxes and radio buttons in your surveys? If you've ever created or completed a survey, you've likely come across checkboxes and radio buttons. These two types of survey tools are similar in some ways, but vary in others, so it's important to know when to use each one. I'm Noel, and in today's video we'll discuss all things checkboxes and radio buttons. What they are, when to use them, best practices, and a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to implement them in your surveys. Let's go. To start, let's discuss the basics. Check boxes are square boxes you can check with an X, and radio buttons are circles you can select when picking an answer to a survey question. When trying to decide which option to utilize for any given question, first establish what type of answers you'd like to receive. Are you looking for a simple yes or no, or as many options as desired? You can ask a question that provides a mix of both types of answers, but do keep in mind, mixing the two may confuse your respondents and warp your survey results. If you decide to combine both, make sure to group similar questions together and use subheadings. If you want to ask a question that has a list of possible answers, it's best to stick with checkboxes as they're mutually inclusive. Let's say you want to know which dishes sound appealing. Allowing respondents to select all that apply with checkboxes is the way to go. If respondents thought all sounded good, they can check off each one, or since checkboxes are independent of one another, they can select chicken pot pie without deselecting any of the options. This is how radio buttons work. Radio buttons are described as mutually exclusive which means respondents can only make one selection. This is why they're better suited for yes or no questions. Selecting a choice on a radio button style question will deselect your previous choice. Now that you know some of the key differences between the two, let's discuss checkbox and radio button best practices. Here are three guidelines to consider. First, use standard common visual representations for both. With checkboxes, use square boxes. With radio buttons, opt for small circles. They'll be more recognizable and easy to use that way. Second, lay out your options vertically. Vertical orientation is easier to navigate and read. This way, your respondents are less likely to get confused or input errors when answering. Third, avoid negations for checkbox labels. Let's say you want to ask how to best notify respondents of future promotions. Don't list one of the options as don't email me. Instead, list email as one of the options and let your respondents decide whether or not they want to select that option. So you've gathered a better understanding of checkboxes and radio buttons, as well as some best practices. Let's move on to our quick step-by-step -step guide on how to implement these tools into your surveys. A great tool to lean on is JotForm. This user-friendly and powerful survey tool is completely customizable and code-free. You can build forms, tables, PDFs, and app templates all from one place. If you want to add checkboxes to your next JotForm survey, just follow these 12 steps. First, go to the JotForm form builder and select the form you'd like to customize and add checkboxes to. Second, get your form's overall style just how you'd like it. This includes the theme and layout. Then click the Add Form Elements button in the left corner of your screen. Third, click the Widgets tab. Fourth, search for the word Checkbox. Fifth, select the style of checkbox you'd like to use. There are options like Flat, Polaris, Button, and Line. The square checkbox is the most recognizable option. Sixth, Type in your question into the square checkbox field. Seventh, type in your answer choices in the options field located under the widget settings tab on the right side of the form builder. Eighth, make any adjustments to the font or font color via the widget settings box. Ninth, click the green update widget button when you're done. Tenth, toggle the preview form button in the top right corner to see what it looks like on a phone, tablet, or desktop. Eleventh, toggle the preview form button once more to go back to your editing screen. Twelfth, 
it's time to finally add the rest of your checkbox questions and answers. Then click Publish, located in the center of the form builder's upper menu, to share, embed, or print your form. If you want to go to the radio button route on your survey, just follow the first three steps from the checkbox How To, and then complete the following steps. After creating the overall form style how you want, search for the phrase radio button. Then a list of radio button styles will appear. There are options like Polaris, Square, and Line. You can choose whichever you prefer, but flat radio buttons tend to be the most recognizable. From the flat radio buttons field, type in your questions. Then on the right side of the form builder, select the options field located under the widget settings tab. There you'll type yes and no vertically, one per line. From there, follow the final steps for the checkbox how to to finalize your radio button survey. There you have it. All the ins and outs of checkboxes versus radio buttons and how to add them to your survey forms. Now you'll be better equipped to use them correctly and collect valuable, actionable feedback. Let's review. The main difference between checkboxes and radio buttons is that checkboxes allow for multiple answer responses, whereas radio buttons allow for only singular answer responses. Here are three best practices when utilizing checkboxes and radio buttons. One, use standard common visuals. Two, use vertical orientation. And three, avoid providing answers in the form of negations. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel before you leave. Until next time, I'm Noel with JotForm. Take care.